Loved by Americans since colonial times, pumpkin is just as popular today as it was back then. But nowadays, given the availability of canned pumpkin, you can use it in recipes year round. If you're looking for new ways to use it, here are four fabulous recipes. Pumpkin pecan tart. It is so delicious. And it was voted the favorite here at the studio. Pumpkin swirl cheesecake. This is a beautiful cream cheesecake with pumpkin puree swirled right in. And pumpkin bread, a very nice, easy, quick bread that your family will adore. And for a spectacular dessert, how about trying our deep dish pumpkin meringue pie? All of these recipes today on Martha Bakes. Well, if you can't decide between a spiced pumpkin pie or a rich pecan tart, combine the two and you have an irresistible pumpkin pecan tart. Two and a half cups of flour, one teaspoon of coarse salt, that's kosher salt, and one teaspoon of granular sugar. And into this mix goes butter, two sticks of really good creamery butter, unsalted. And look for good butter, French style butter. Pulse your machine until the butter is coarsely chopped in that flour mixture. That's pretty good. And then add iced water, it has to be really cold. Okay, that's a half a cup. I always pour on the outside of the feed tube. I want it to get to the outside of the mixture. And if you don't add enough water, the crust will be crumbly and dry. If you add too much water, it'll be wet and soggy. This looks very nice. So if you notice, that took no time at all. This is enough for two pie crusts. So I'm just putting it all out and dividing it in half. You know that you've added enough water when you just squeeze it gently and it holds together. You really have to have it holding together. Okay, so we'll divide this in half and wrap in plastic wrap in flat disks. Why a flat disk? Well, it's much easier uh, after chilling to roll out a flat disk. And it also chills faster if it's in a flat disk. And it makes a very nice, simple to roll, elegant, flaky, beautifully browned crust. And you can see the little pieces of butter still visible in the crust. So chill this really well. So after rolling and blind baking, this is the crust. Look how golden brown. It is rigid enough to hold a heavy filling like the pumpkins and the pecan. And uh, to keep the bottom from getting soggy when you add the filling into this pre-baked shell, brush a little egg white on the bottom of the crust with a soft brush. Just want to put a little bit of a glossy barrier between the crust and the filling. So now the filling. Two large eggs. Whisk those up with a pinch of salt. And add to this a 15 ounce can of plain pureed pumpkin. This is readily available in the grocery store and it's basically pumpkin, nothing else. And one can, this is a 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk. There are other pie fillings that one can make, but this one goes so well with the pecans. And the pecans are part of a streusel topping that goes on the pie once the filling bakes for about 15 minutes. Now mix this all together. Pretty color. Add one teaspoon of powdered cinnamon. You can make it a little bit spicier if you like by adding a little bit of nutmeg or allspice, but I think just cinnamon is very delicious. And then pour this right into your crust, the blind baked crust. And what I meant by blind baking you take a unbaked shell, line it with parchment, some weights, pie weights, and bake it until it starts to get a beautiful color like this. 
So transfer this immediately to a 425 degree preheated oven until it's slightly set, about 15 minutes. Now to make that delicious streusel topping for your pumpkin pecan tart, three quarters of a cup of light brown sugar, one teaspoon of cinnamon, a pinch of salt, and three tablespoons of flour, and have four tablespoons of butter cut up into little tiny pieces like this and should be moderately cold. And this has to be cut in. It works very, very well with a fork. In fact, I remember my mother making all her pie crusts with a fork. I prefer the food processor. So this looks very good. And stir in one and a half cups of halves of pecans. These are so beautiful. And these should be gently tossed with the topping. And the pie is out of the oven, as you can see. And just gently sprinkle. So pop that right back into a 350 degree oven. Bake until the topping is a dark brown and the center is bubbling slightly. That takes 35 to 40 minutes. And now look, it's cool. It's ready to slice. Looks so good. This is a wonderful way to serve both pumpkin and pecan. And a scoop of vanilla ice cream or cinnamon ice cream, or just a simple spoonful of whipped cream. A perfect, perfect pie for any occasion. For a very fantastic, dazzling, two-toned effect, you swirl some pumpkin puree into a beautiful cheesecake batter. This is a mouth-watering pumpkin swirl cheesecake. First, you'll need a springform pan like this. This is nine inch. Fit this into the spring form. So tighten your spring form. Cut a round of parchment that fits exactly in the bottom. So now your pan is ready for the graham cracker crust that fits right down in the bottom. This is very simple to make, and I'm sure you've all made such things before. One cup very finely ground graham crackers with two tablespoons of sugar. Mix that together. And two tablespoons of melted butter. Always seems that how can this hold together, but it does. Stir this together. Graham crackers are a very dry, tasty cracker. You could use chocolate wafers or even vanilla wafers for the crust, but I like the taste of graham with pumpkin. And we'll just pour the whole mixture into the bottom. Spread it out into as even a layer as possible, and then compress it. I find it very easy to do this quickly and efficiently with the bottom of a glass. Now this gets pre-baked in a 350 preheated oven. Just bake it until it's set 10 minutes or so. So now for the filling. This is a cream cheese filling and we're using two pounds, yes, two pounds of best quality cream cheese. So this is nice and smooth. Add one and a half cups plus two tablespoons of granulated sugar. This is a large amount of filling to fit that nine inch graham cracker crust lined cake pan. Break into a bowl four eggs. You can add them one at a time to your filling. That's one. Cheesecakes are so fun to make and easy, and they are also very, very popular. And there goes the fourth egg. And don't forget one teaspoon of best quality vanilla. And a pinch of salt. So scrape down your bowl. That's the filling. How simple is that? You could make a cheesecake just with this filling, but for a spectacular presentation, it's kind of fun to add some pumpkin to a portion of this filling and swirl it in. Add a quarter of the filling into one cup of pureed pumpkin. Add some cinnamon, a half a teaspoon, 
and some freshly grated nutmeg. About a quarter of a teaspoon, which is about a third of a nutmeg. So incorporate the spices thoroughly into the batter. And now pour your cheesecake into the pre-baked, and this is what it looks like, pre-baked, a little bit golden brown around the edges, and place the cheesecake pan, the springform pan, on a square of aluminum foil. And I like to put this around just to prevent any, any chance of the water in which this cheesecake is baked from leaking into the pan. Mm. Get every bit of goodness into that pan. So here we have the base into which we will now put dollops of pumpkin. You can dot this over the top and just use up all the pumpkin mixture. And then with the skewer, swirl into the base, just like this. And it does get that pumpkin all the way down through the cake. Very nice. Put this in a roasting pan like this with high sides. Transfer to a 325 degree oven. Once it's on the oven shelf, then pour in your boiling water. This is creating a bain-marie effect in a roasting pan. Bake that at 325 degrees until it's slightly wobbly in the center of the cheesecake. That'll take about 75 minutes. So let the cheesecake cool completely, refrigerate uncovered for at least 24 hours. Run a knife all the way around the perimeter. Release the spring form ring. And there you have a really beautiful cheesecake. Slide it onto your serving platter or pedestal. And there you have a spectacular cheesecake for any occasion. I'm just measuring three and a quarter cups of flour for a really delicious, delicately spiced pumpkin bread that I think you will enjoy very much. It's the perfect example of what's known as quick breads. No fussy yeast, no kneading required, and it's delicious straight out of the oven, but it's even better the next day after the flavors of the spices have had a chance to develop. So three and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, and one of my favorite spices, allspice, quarter of a teaspoon, three teaspoons of baking powder. Make sure your baking powder is fresh. And now a half a teaspoon of baking soda. Half a teaspoon of freshly grated nutmeg. And it's about half of a nutmeg. There. So I'm whisking with a wire whisk. And these are our dry ingredients ready to incorporate into our wet ingredients, which I'll make right now. So one can this is a 15 ounce can of pumpkin. Now we've been using this in all our pumpkin recipes. And by the way, here's a surprising fact about canned pumpkin puree. Most manufacturers make it from one or more kinds of squash, which can be less stringy and richer in sweetness and color than most pumpkins. And one cup of dark brown sugar. Cream the brown sugar and the pumpkin and one cup of granulated sugar also. Four large eggs. And we've changed the typical quick bread recipe uh, to make it, I think, even more palatable and delicious by substituting melted butter, 12 tablespoons of melted butter, for an equal amount of vegetable uh, oil or shortening. I really prefer the taste of butter, and I'd rather use a good creamery butter than oil in my bread. So just let this get nicely incorporated. And now you can add your butter. And then you can start spooning in your dry ingredients, alternating with a half a cup of buttermilk.
It smells really, really delicious. And a little bit more of the dry ingredients. So these are, these cake pans are buttered six by three. They're really little miniature bread pans. And you can also make two larger loaves, eight and a half by four and a half. These little ones are perfect for gifting. And the easiest way I find to make sure that each pan gets an equal amount is to spoon equal amounts, one by one into each pan. You can also do as the professionals do and weigh the pans. And it's very handy to have a good scale in your kitchen and work with it that way. I think it's a very good idea. Then you'll get even sized loaves and most professional bakers do use scales because it's hard to divide into four equal <laughs> portions. Yes, this has a very rich orangey color. So transfer this to a 350 degree oven, 40 to 45 minutes. So this quick bread really does slice very nicely. And since the ends are not as desirable as the center, I'll just cut one off and give it a taste. Mmm, it's really, really good. It's so delicious that you'll be craving it all year long. Enjoy. We have been using throughout this show canned pumpkin, which is very accessible and available all year round. But if perhaps you do grow a pumpkin or buy one, you can make your own pumpkin puree. So uh, this is a sugar pumpkin. Break off the stem. Takes a little bit of elbow grease. Cut your pumpkin in half, top to bottom using a big knife. There, how beautiful is that? Scrape out all the insides. Once you have the pumpkin completely scraped out, roast in a preheated 450 degree oven for about 45 to 50 minutes. And when they're done, we'll have pumpkins that look like this. And when you pick this up, inside is all the pumpkin pulp. So you just peel that skin right off and put the pumpkin into the bowl of your food processor. And now, because this is moisture, than canned pumpkin. I suggest putting it into slightly damp cheesecloth and letting it just sit and seep. There is a difference in color, but taste pretty much the same. You can make your own or you can buy it. This deep dish pumpkin meringue pie is a guaranteed showstopper when it arrives at the table. Under billowy snowy pinks of meringue lies a traditional pumpkin pie for a modern twist on an old favorite. And it isn't too difficult to make. What you need is a good pumpkin pie filling, a pre-baked deep crust, and eight egg whites for the meringue. So start with the filling. This filling is three eggs. It's three quarters of a teaspoon of cinnamon. It's three quarters of a teaspoon of ground ginger one teaspoon of vanilla, a big pinch of salt, and a quarter of a teaspoon of freshly ground nutmeg. Nutmeg just smells so much better when you freshly grate it. So that's enough nutmeg. Stir this in with the eggs. Three quarters of a cup of light brown sugar. Packed. These brown sugars tend to dry out really quickly. So mix the sugar in. And one tablespoon of cornstarch. This might seem surprising to you, but it does help keep that pumpkin filling nice and firm. And where is the pumpkin, you say? Well, you need a 15 ounce can of pumpkin or 15 ounces of homemade pumpkin puree. I find that one of the very few things that I will open a can for is pumpkin and sardines. But for this, pumpkin in a can is very good. 
stir that in. And one 12 ounce can of evaporated milk. Now this is different from condensed sweetened milk. This is evaporated milk, which is a little richer, a little thicker than regular whole milk and results in a silkier, smoother pie filling. It's canned homogenized milk that's been heated until 60% of the water has evaporated. So there, what a nice filling. And this goes right into your prepared crust. Pour it in. So now this goes into a 325 degree oven. Bake until the center is slightly wobbly, but the custard is set. That takes about 50 to 55 minutes. Now, some of you might find it difficult to get this pie over to your oven without spilling. I have a little secret way that I do it. You look at the oven. You do not look at the pie. Just carry it evenly and just walk straight to the oven and pretty much foolproof you don't spill the filling. So now for that big, fluffy, billowy meringue. Eight egg whites in the bowl of your mixer. Add two cups of granulated sugar. And have on your stove a pot with a couple inches of water in it, large enough to hold this bowl over the water. And we're making a Swiss meringue. Swiss meringue is egg whites and sugar uh, heated until the sugar is totally dissolved and then beaten until it's light and fluffy. As opposed to an Italian meringue, which is a sugar syrup beaten into egg whites until it's light and fluffy. And a French meringue is just egg whites and sugar beaten in slowly, uh, which tends to weep more than the other two meringues. So just until the sugar is no longer granular. So now remove this from the heat, place the bowl right on the mixer, fitted with a wire whisk. Beat these until they are glossy and have nice stiff heat. Well, I think our meringue is fluffy and has peaks that hold. Now this meringue, by the way, you can use on your lemon pies and your chocolate pies. Uh, it is really beautiful. Now spoon this right on the top of your cool baked pumpkin pie. Seems like a lot of meringue, but it is so beautiful. And you can scrape your bowl and everybody has a different method of swirling and swooping that beautiful meringue. And then take your torch and lightly brown. Now, alternatively, you can heat your broiler and put your pie under the broiler just for a minute, but this works a lot better with a propane torch. Today, I hope I've introduced you to some new ways of using pumpkin for more than just the standard pumpkin pie. Thanks very much for tuning in, and please join me for the next episode of Martha Bakes. Place six ounces of pepitas in a bowl. Add six tablespoons of sugar, one large beaten egg white, and a pinch each of salt, allspice, and cayenne pepper. Stir until well combined. Spread the mixture in a single layer on a parchment-lined baking sheet. Bake at 350 degrees until golden, about 10 minutes. Season with salt and stir gently, leaving some clumps. Let cool before serving.